Hey everybody, Brian Connolly here, wanting to share with you a, a prophetic exercise that God is having me do with all of my children. It actually began with my oldest, Emma, who's seven. And uh, this is what he said to me. So I want you to take seven days and I want you to prophesy over her, but not in the sense, you know, that I would be familiar with as far as looking her in the eyes and saying, you know, honey, this is what God is showing me about you. This is what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to sit down and he wanted me to create over the course of seven days, he wanted me to create this document where, where it's called When I See You. And for seven days in a row, I would sit down at the computer and I would come up with, I mean, it would just be, it would just be so fast. It wouldn't even be an effort. I would sit down and I would close my eyes and I would think about my daughter and I would think about when I see her, I would think about what it is that I saw what it is that I saw her becoming, what it is that God was going to do in her life one day, the person that God was going to cause her to be. And, uh, and so what I did was I sat down, I started typing, when I see you, comma, I see dot, 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 and you would just fill in, you know, the blank, you would fill in the statement. For example, uh, with Emma, I would say like, when I see you, I see someone who is sensitive, compassionate, and caring. When I see you, I see someone full of joy that the world will be attracted to. When I see you, I see somebody that takes their time with, some, with people and is willing to love on them and give all that she is. And what, what that exercise has done, this might sound strange to you because you might uh, wonder, I mean, at least I did, I'm like, you know, is it even possible? I love my daughter to pieces. Is it possible to actually grow in love with her more? And what I have found through this exercise is the answer is, is yes, it's a resounding Yes, and what has happened is, it's caused me to have a greater affection in my heart for her, and I'm actually treating her according to what it is that I see, the person that I see her actually becoming. I don't sit there and look at her and see how she still has the capacity at times, and believe me, she does, to talk back and be disobedient, you know, and to willfully disobey. And um, this, is, this is so scriptural, it's not even funny. This is one of, in my opinion, one of the greatest, like, heartbeats and, and just essence of, of, of prophecy that we need to understand that we're not weighing a book by its cover. We're not looking at people based on what they've done or what they haven't done or whatever expectation they didn't fulfill or where they've been. We're actually looking at them according to the value of their life, according to the value that Christ imputes to them because of his sacrifice. So uh, I want to read to you where this principle comes from in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And, and I love, I absolutely love this chapter. And as you can see, my Bible is just riddled with, uh, with all kinds of underlines and highlights in this chapter as well as chapter 4. One of my favorite passages of Scripture, Paul writes, beginning in verse 14, For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this. So this is how he came to the conclusion. This is how the love of Christ, depending on your translation, compelled him, controlled him. This is why it controlled him. This is the conclusion that he came to that was actually, I believe, the fuel that, 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 that burned or caused the, the flame of his heart to burn all the more. That one died for all, therefore all died. So because Christ died, he, he revealed the value of all mankind, that, that, that mankind is worth loving, that mankind is worth dying for, is worth forgiving. Therefore, whatever it is that we've come to believe about man, apart from what the Christ reveals, the cross reveals, also has to die. So I'm not sitting here looking at people based on where they're at and, 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 and not knowing their whole story and saying, why are that way, you know, why are they that way and being critical and judgmental. We're looking at them according to the fact that Christ paid a price for them. And he died for all, that word all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, in light of what he's saying there, from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh. And that's verse 16. So I just want to encourage you. I, I, I think if, if, if we as parents, if, if we as friends, if we as, you know, whoever, teenagers, because I know some of you teens, some of you youth, you watch these videos. Um, I want to challenge you, especially if there are people in your life right now that are rubbing you wrong, um, people in your life that you just like to smack across the head because you, you feel like because they are the way they are, you're having, you know, it affects you in some way, shape, or form. I want to encourage you, take seven days. I don't care if it's for your children, one for each child, you know, seven days for each child, seven days for a friend, seven days for a mom, for a dad, a disgruntled coworker, somebody in school that rubs you the wrong way. I don't care. Take seven days, I'm encouraging you, I'm challenging you to write out for seven days, when I see you, I see, and you fill in the blank, 
and you ask the Lord to, to cause you to judge righteously, not with, not with the eyes of the flesh, not with being critical or judgmental, but to, but to weigh them according to the, 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 the price that Jesus paid for them. I'm telling you, you will begin to treat them the exact same way that Jesus treats them. You'll be able to see them the exact same way that Jesus sees them. And, and this, is, this is my excitement as a father. One day, 15, 16, 17, 18 years of age, my girls are going to read that and they're going to have to decide whether or not that what daddy sees is true and if it's real uh, or, and, and believe that or, or look for it somewhere else. And I believe that is exactly what it is we're doing in our own relationship with God is he's telling us constantly what it is that he sees. This is the beauty of prophecy because as he speaks and reveals who I am, I'm becoming that person. So if you take an opportunity and tell somebody over seven days, this is what I see when I see you, and type it out and, and put as the heading, you know, March 10th, March 11th, March 12th, March 13th, you know, and then for me, I was it was like eight or 10 that I would write a day for Emma. It can be two, it can be three, it can be one, it doesn't matter, it can be endless. The more you do it, the more you're training your eye to see what's actually real and what Jesus sees. So let me know, I'd be encouraged to, when you guys see me, write to me, text me, call me, Stop me in church. Let me know how, if you guys did the exercise, what came about. And I promise you, affection and love for that person will grow in ways you haven't yet experienced. Love you. Talk to you next week. And be